Hello, and welcome to Why I Love Warhammer, and this is the weekly news roundup. It's the first video I'm filming of 2024. <clears throat> Not the first video to go up of 2024, but... So, this series, um, planning on making it once a week, go through all the Warhammer community articles that have been uploaded in that week, and so that you know, we can get hyped about stuff together, but also doing it all over the course of a week, so, so that we're not so, so that we can kind of pace ourselves a bit with that hype so i have loaded up here every single community article uploaded from the sunday preview from last week from the week before um so not including that one all the way through to the sunday preview from the 7th of january 2024 so this is the first first week of news for you know fr from Warhammer, from games workshop and yeah, just go through, get a bit hyped. I'm probably going to end up going on a bit of a ramble uh, at some points, but yeah, let's just see how we go. Um, I've also got my cabinet open. Uh, it's a bit out of focus just because of how my webcam works. But um, so yeah, my various painted models are behind me. And if I keep my arm foc if I move my hand, it will focus in on certain models just a little bit more which is an interesting feature of my work i didn't know it could do learn something new every day anyway um so this first article i'm not going to play any of the videos um it's the new new miniatures for the year and i guess i i adore this tower theory model i love this weapon um i think it's beautifully sculpted and the it shows off the cow feet a bit more um, I, I'm always a fan of saying that the Tau are cows, not fish, because they've got cow feet. Um, there's just their vehicles are all named after fish. Um, but what I love with this model mostly, I love that weapon. It's a melee weapon, which, you know, Tau need a bit more of. Um, as much as Tau are a gunline army, their ballistic skill, last I checked, was still three up. So they're not the most accurate marksman out there for a gunline army. And... But I love this pot. I think this thing here just adds to so much of the lowercase e ethereal nature of the tower ethereals. Um, at least for me, I adore the red. Um, yes, it reminds me of the Farsight Enclaves, but it's just so pretty. And uh, I know some people uh, really don't like the the cloaks that they do for games but i adore them um a i think they look really cool they add a bit of gravitas to the model but also as someone who's trying to i mean i say, I say most people in this hobby are continuously trying to improve how they paint and what they paint um i find personally that cloaks are a really good way to do that because trying to pick out the colors and get that tone really makes it you can really show off at least I find for me, I can really show off my painting when it's done as a cloak. Um, the Fire Slayer dude from Age of Sigmar. I'm a huge fan of Age of Sigmar. I, I love the aesthetic. It's a surprisingly hopeful world. Um, and I'm a sucker for dwarves. And I've got a thing loaded up where I'm going to end. I, I know I'm going to go on a ramble about how much I love dwarves. Fantasy dwarves. Um, Fire Slayers don't do it for me. Um, but to be honest, as much as they don't do it for me, any time I'm trying to get someone into Age of Sigmar because they've said they don't really like... If someone doesn't like the aesthetic of 40k, but I still want to get them into the game, um, I, I, I go, okay, let's try you out on Age of Sigmar. And I always start with the Fire Slayers because I find them funny. Uh, they're a bunch of... I don't know too much about the lore of the Fire Slayers. That's a gap in my knowledge. But from a pure aesthetic standpoint, they're a, they're mostly naked dwarves. That's funny to me. I think that's really funny. Um, I maybe it's from the the Zerk Viking roots of how that's been popularized in media. But they're funny. They're dwarves. They've got big axes and they've got the magma droths that I think are really awesome. So. Yeah, huge fan of the Fire Slayers in that regard, even though they're not personally for me. Um, the Anniversary Extras. I do like these. I do wish that I could acquire one without having to spend 
increments of fifty pounds up to two hundred pounds. Um, it just feels like I'd love this bag, right? I'd love to own that bag. I'd love to take this bag with me to game with. I love this dice tray. I'd, I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to go to a game with this bag in tow, whip out this dice tray, and take our model out of the work. That would be awesome. Am I going to spend two hundred pounds to do that? Probably not. Um, yeah, I just don't think I'd spend two hundred pounds to get the bag. Um, like I'm not above spending two hundred pounds on Warhammer when I've got the money for it, but it, it, in one go. But just the timing for me, um, you know, timing for me is not right to try and get this bag. Uh, let's store find. Okay, old world, old world, so hyped for the old world. Um, so back in like 2006, 2007, um, I tried to get into one of fantasy. Um, there was a White Dwarf article, and so the Ogre Kingdoms have the Noblars, <clears throat> and there was this art, there was this article in the White Dwarf magazine for making an entirely Noblar army <clears throat> and I adored it I, I was playing a lot of Moria goblins from then Lord of the Rings now Middle Earth um, at the time I I just started 40k with Night Lords from Chaos Space Marines but I wanted to give fantasy a go, I only had one friend who played fantasy um, and he so yeah I, I saw this article about the Noblars and I thought this is awesome, I want to give this a go did not understand the list building. Didn't get it at all. Um, I basically got one box of Noblars and gave every single one, every single upgrade, regardless of how legal it would be for the game, for the list, even by the standards of the Dwarf article, and went, that's 2,000 points from 32 dudes. That's how I played it. Um, and it was fun. So I, I wanted to get into fantasy. Um, so when I saw the old world coming back, uh, I got pretty excited. Um, when, when they first announced it, it's actually when I started my Skaven Tide army from Age of Sigma. Um, most of my Skaven Tide army are underneath the table off screen. I've got. Let's get one out. Um... One at random. Um... This is one of my clan rats. Um, I bought this one when the Age of Sigma, when the most recent Skaven uh, Battle Tome came out because they changed the rules for uh, what was and was not Battle Line at that point. Um, so before, if you were playing Clans Mulder, um, then your giant rats and your um, rat ogres were battle line. So I had two squads of rat ogres, two squads of giant rats, they came in the same box, and they were battle line. Um, then when the next one came out, they updated it so that it was only two of those could be battle line per leader unit you had. I didn't quite get that memo, it didn't end, sit, sit, end my head, so I panicked, went, oh god, I need some clan rats to make my army legal again, so I bought a box of clan rats. Um, looking back, I probably could have just bought uh, another leader unit, um, you know, some you know, warp engine unit, and anyway, then they revealed that Skaven were only going to be uh, you know, supported as far as, here's a legacy PDF, go nuts. Um, so I was looking into what else I could play. When they started showing off these Bretonians, um, so I've got a friend who is trying to get into, who's starting up Tomb Kings. So I've already said to myself, I'm not going to do Tomb Kings. I don't want to double up. Um, also, because I was, I, I play Necrons in 40k in Middle Earth. I've got uh, Ring Wraiths, and I have Army of the Dead on order. So I've got. Two system, two two games workshop game systems where I'm playing skeleton warriors. I don't really want to play skeleton warriors a third time. 
Um, and I don't want a fourth skeleton army. Um, so I wasn't really looking at them. I absolutely adore the horses in the Bretonian models. Um, but I'm genuinely torn between... Um, but the thing, I, I, I don't... I tend not to enjoy playing humans. Mostly I hate painting skin. Um, I, so I, I, I love painting armour. I love painting fur. Um, I don't like painting normal human skin. Um, and at some point I'm gonna, uh, I've got a fun story about painting skin tones that I can do for a video. I just need to figure out a way to tell the story in a way that doesn't make the shop owner sound like they were a bad person because they weren't. They were really lovely. I just, yeah. It, uh, when I figure out how to tell that story in a way that makes sense for the internet, I'll tell that story about when I, when I tried to, you know, when I wanted to paint skin. Um, so at the moment I'm torn between playing in between getting the dwarf and mountain holds or and the orc and goblin tribes. Um the orc and goblin tribes ride pigs. I think pigs are amazing. Love me a pig. Um and if I were to get a bigger house um in um, somewhere more rural, I'd love a pet pig. Um because unrelated facts, right? This is a weird un unrelated ramble. Um, those like micro pigs and teacup pigs that you see on TV and posters that are like yay big, when they grow up, they're like the size of a very large dog. So a fully grown teacup pig would be an animal I'd love to have in the house. Well, no, in the garden and maybe around the house if it could be if it could be house trained. Um, love pigs, love pigs so much. That's genuinely why I play orc and goblin tribes in one of the old world because they ride pigs. Um, the Dwarf Mountain Holds, I think the Dwarves are amazing. Um, I went looking through their old models, and they've got, uh, you know, you can get Bugman, and if you go to Warhammer World, uh, they've got a Bugman's Bar. So you can get that, there's um, the White Dwarf himself, um, I forget his name, begins with a G. Um, I hope that he gets supported. I hope they do a model of him in plastic or something for the old world when they do the dwarf mountain holds because I'd love to have both of them as the kind of the general and other lead of unit in my you know, in, in my dwarf and mountain holds army. Um also it turns out in sixth edition uh fantasy um there was a female dwarf model that they had, Helga something. Um I think it should be really cool to have as well. Um and to be honest, what I'd do is I'd just say which one was my general, like my main leader, do depending on if I thought it would annoy the person I was playing against. Because um, it'd be funny. But um, yeah, I think the dwarves are awesome. And I love how um, the Iron Drakes unit, um, which I, I was watching a video where they were down as a rare unit, so only 25% of your force can be made up of Iron Drakes. But I love that they've got armour for their beards. Um, I'm excited to learn more about the the fantasy, the, the old world lore around them, and yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I'm reluctant to start doing a lot of research into it now because I don't know how much is going to get retconned for uh, for the release of the old world. So I want to go in, I want to go in fresh. I want to go in, not I want to really go into the old world, not knowing much about the fantasy setting. Um, I enjoy the Beastmen. Um, I think they're neat. Um, I'd probably avoid playing as these three, unless the High Elf Realms have the most amazing armour, um, which granted the, some of the fantasy sculpts did have absolutely gorgeous armour. It was genuinely a... a it gave you pause for thought. Um, I tend not to like playing you know, factions that look like normal people. Um, is why I tend to be drawn more towards I mean, Ravening Horde type armies, but then the dwarfs, so and then the horses and pegasuses and the that gorgeous unicorn model that they that uh, Forge World are going to be doing for the old world is. I mean, I'd love to try and paint that, even though I have a, such a hard time painting white, um, but I just think that yeah, the the horses and stuff in the Bretonians made me think I might want them, but I think I'm going to be holding up for the Dwarf Mountain Holds. 
Okay. Um, so this is just the free nurture for the month, and what well, it's done. Um, yeah, I just yeah, it's beastman. Um, there was a video that I was watching that really showed me how cool it is to paint fur, and fur is what converted me to contrast paints. I love contrast paints as a way of a way of uh, painting up models and painting fur is how you do it. Spray it black, xenothal in a grey or a white, and then use your contrast paints over the top. You get gorgeous fur textures, and yeah, it's why I think these men be so cool to play. I love these fel yeah, felgor ravagers. Um, yeah, they're, they're really cool models, and I mean, if I could, I might remove the tactical rock and see if I could reposition the leg, um, but otherwise it's a really cool model and if you can get down and get one, brilliant. Um, yeah. Okay, more Bretonians. Um, I love these wings. I love these wings and I love that they're rearing up like that. Um, I think when I checked like 70% of my audience is from the US, um, so maybe some of the audience don't know this. There's an urban legend in the UK that um, <clears throat> if there's a statue of someone and they're on a and the statue has a horse in that with, with that pose, it means that the person that depicted in the statue died in battle. It's not actually true, but um, I I like to think this is reference to that, but I'm not gonna say. It definitely is. Um, I think it's a cool pose. The wings are gorgeous. Um, if I had the money and the time, I'd love to replace all the humans with uh, like with dryads um, or lizard men or something, so that I could just have the fully, so I could get rid of the human aspect and just have the cool horses and yeah, a cool looking state, a cool looking ride for them. Um, not that they're not cool, but uh, yeah, personal taste. Um, sprues, and then the normal dudes. Um, they are cool. They are genuinely very cool. And thankfully, these guys are mostly fully helmeted, uh, which does make them enormously more appealing to me personally. Um, they're very intricate. Um, they're very intricate and. I'd like to know, I, I, I found out through various bits of googling that the the Bretonian launch box is about 1,250 points. Um, I'd like to know how many points these 10 dudes are because they feel very intricate and painting up 10 for an army would be fine, lovely, fun project. I personally feel like if I was to try and paint up like 40, that might get a bit daunting. Um, so if you're painting up a horde of Bretonians, maximum respect, because that's something that would daunt me to no end. Okay, uh, the next issue of White Dwarf. Um, I actually was given a subscription to White Dwarf for 12 months for Christmas, so I'm looking forward to... I'm hoping this is the first one I get through the post. Um, Necrons index stuff, which would be interesting, and a bit of lore. Um, to honest, I've not actually read White Dwarf since I was at school. Um, like, I don't think I've actually read, read read a White Dwarf magazine since like two thousand nine. So I, I I'm I'm looking forward to going through White Dwarf again, really try and get back into it because it's it was a good resource. Um, and it was it was nice that our school library had a subscription to it, so me and my friends would sit in the li our school library at lunch times, just going through White Dwarf magazines. Um, our library was really kind. Of, if the issue was six months old or older, got to take it home for keeps. Um, so I've got various White Dwarf magazines that through that. Um, I bought a couple of issues just straight up off the shelf, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to. The subscription for this and yeah um see what the index uh xenos does for 10th dynasty 
UK. Um, how they're writing the new law, it's just neat. I think this is where they confirm some of the stuff that's not going to be supported. I'm not going to read you the whole article. I was genuinely surprised and didn't know that this tank is what they named Nulm Oil after. They named Nulm Oil after this tank, so that's very fascinating to me. Um, considering that based on this image, I don't really know where I'd put the Nulm Oil. I'd pr probably go with an Agrax Earthshade painting this. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really cool. I'm not like, I'm not going to read the last cause on this news roundup. That's not what this is for. This is just to kind of get hyped together. Uh, so yeah, they good art, long article, just go interview people about how they did the law. Um, I've read some people not being too happy with how they divide these guys up and that the Tomb Kings should be neutral. Um, I'm always a fact. I'm always a fan of a bit more nuance. I would. I. I. I possibly. I. I. I def. If. If. New. If there were, neutral. I would love that. And based on, people saying that the Tomb Kings are just trying to rule their own people. They're not, relentlessly expansionist and stuff. And they. They were, initially designed to be a neutral faction. Um. I completely understand the grievance, and yes, I would love neutral factions in more things. Um. Given, given that they're put in this arbitrary good versus evil forces of fantasy ravening hordes divide, uh, I actually think it would have been really cool and subversive if they'd put the Tomb Kings in the forces of fantasy and put either the Wood Elves or the High Elves into the ravening hordes as a kind of a, a subversion of the tropes. But I, I get why they've done it. People look at skeletons and think those are the bad guys for the most part. So I get why they've done it, but I fully understand why some people aren't going to be happy that they've done it. And yeah, I agree. Um, I am trying to keep positive about it, at least for this channel, because that's what this channel is all about. It's about being positive. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm still going to be hyped uh, for you know for, for the Tomb Kings, and I and, and and having just the two does mean that you're only if you wanted to get rules to everything, you're only buying the two books. Um, of course, I think I prefer it as one book or even three PDFs. But reducing the amount of books required to get all the rules, that makes a certain amount of sense to me. So, um, yeah, that's still cool to me. Um, now, uh, returning to the old world, I right, so the Warhammer Plus... Uh, stuff. I'm subscribed to Warhammer Plus, but I fully understand those who didn't get the subscription. Um, if you can, I, I do. In, the Law Masters is one of my favourite series. They do just kind of it, it's like a law video you get on YouTube, but you know everything about it is canon at least at that point. Um, like yeah, with a lot of, a lot of law channels they're so accurate, um, but even the best ones do get stuff wrong um like i don't consider myself a law channel um and i i definitely get stuff wrong i'm planning on doing a complete redo of my imperial knights video because i got a lot of information wrong on that based on the comments um so i'm going to do a, a so yeah uh but the law masters if it was like that's straight from the source that's gonna be good in canon hype um the battle report was fun um and it was yeah it, it was a weird game that they were playing but it was good to see the game fully in action and yeah i just thought that was good uh more old world stuff again this is just another interview with the designers they did a lot of that this week because saturday just gone was pre-order day for the you know before the old world for these two starter sets um And yeah, and just showing off the paint job from the community. Um, very good. I they, they always pick really good ones for these for these articles. And um, this one, the pink and yellow with a cup of tea, it's like a Battenberg cake. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, 
And to be honest, if I were to go Bretonians, I think I might try and replicate this colour scheme because I think having a bunch of Battenberg knights would be incredible. Um, like half Battenberg, half the Green Knight model with that uniform. But yeah, Battenberg all the way. Love that one. That's my favourite one from this entire article. Like they've got some cool ones. Like I can't, you know, the quality of these paint jobs is phenomenal. The star is so well done. Um, but yeah, I'm Team Battenberg. Uh, Legions Imperials. I do. I, I I've been mean to do a video about loving this game because I I love the epic scale nature of things. Um, but yeah, just some more, just you know, more downloadable stuff for the you know, the the uh, sorry, the black book for the Legions Imperialis. Um, yeah, it's cool. Um, just knights and titans, and I do love my knights. So I've got my chaos knights on that top shelf there. Um, it's not all of them. Those are actually the ones I don't bring to games because the ones I bring to games are in a carry case off camera. Um, more old world uh, designing and painting. I love this Sphinx thing. That's beautiful. I think that's just a cool model. And uh, I feel like they could have chosen a better model than this one to start the reveals for the old world but i do like his antlers and it's it's still a cool sight um the painting guides i i do find it funny sometimes that the painting guides involve getting paints that would cost more than the model um oh dear god like i don't think i'd use this many paints i don't own this many paints um but, you know, if that's what it takes to get this paint job, damn. Yeah, this is the unicorn I was on about. I think this is phenomenal, and I even if I don't get Bretonians as an army, I'd still kind of want to try just getting this model, just to, just to paint it up. Really get good with white. Because um, I love it. It's I, I love the kind of shy horse hooves. It's the really old world kind of... Not old world like Warhammer the old world but um before unicorns became really pop really kind of focused in on pop culture um they were you know they, they weren't so cutesy they did have the beards they had the the, the the fur on their hooves and it was a different kind of creature they were very they felt like a deeper old magic than kind of yeah french of his magic my little pony type unicorns and the unicorns get in pop culture unicorn if you type into a gif keyboard um you know unicorn not like those this is like a proper old magic type unicorn i'm, I'm all here for it um and i like what they were saying in this article about how they designed the staff as that it came from a different army because it was made by um elves or something uh yeah staff meant to be a gift from the wood elves and I thought that was a really nice touch that they designed it with a different aesthetic in mind. Love the Bone Dragon. I think the Bone Dragon's awesome. It's also... I like, again, you know, the same way I said the Unicorn was a very old magic type Unicorn. I do find it refreshing to have dragons that have front legs, back legs, and wings. Um, It's just not... It's not a type of dragon I feel like is in enough modern fiction. Uh, a lot of modern fiction tries to be very kind of scientifically accurate where it the wings are part of the front legs and yeah that's more like what, you know, how bats operate. There aren't, uh, and George R. R. Martin said that no animal in nature has uh, you know, has four legs plus wings um, but I'm all here for it. I, I love the I love this type of dragon rather than the kind of the wyvern style dragons that are more prevalent today. Um, so I like wyverns too, but I always want more stuff. I want more media and more dragons like this, as well as more wyverns. So yeah, very happy about a dragon like this being in the game. This guy's cool. I love his bird. love birds in my Warhammer models. Um, yeah, scrolling down here. Okay. Um, 
what's in the journals. Um, yeah, I don't know much commentary I can give on this one. Nothing that would add anything too meaningful. Um, this I'm excited by. Um, so unit feathers, uh, if you don't know, were a thing where if you, you if you have your movement tray and that movement tray is meant to represent 25 models and you've only got um so i'm just trying to do the maths here five five three so if you've only got 16 models and you want them to represent 25 models you put a unit fitter in the middle to bulk out the squad and back in warmer fantasy times that was just a given that was like yeah fair enough that's 25 models even though you only own 16 it's 25 models and you move you know move stuff strategically and you still play the game but i think there's a couple of things i think this represents for warhammer the old world that i really appreciate um and it's and and i think what I'm excited by this because this article being on the website suggests that this is being officially endorsed. Because what's the biggest stopper? What's the biggest thing that stops people getting into this hobby, right? Um, it's going to be a price, right? The money. This is not a cheap hobby to be into, right? Um, and if there's anything you can do to make the hobby cheaper so you can have your full 2000 point army but having spent less money suddenly the game's so much more accessible but <clears throat> i also completely understand people who like to have the full immersion of the game the whole wizzy what you see is what you get um it's a stat i try and hold myself to the WYSIWYG standard um so every model i'm playing with um will be i try and make it WYSIWYG. what my opponents play for me personally i don't care you want that mug to be a mephitic blight hauler bring it on um but that's yeah but i know people do really appreciate WYSIWYG. they love that immersion unit first do is you are still playing with Z-Wig because that squad is all there there's just a unit filler in the middle so it's part of the unit it's part of that squad so it shouldn't break any immersion it looks like it belongs but it has that benefit you get from a certain level of proxying where you're not having to commit as much money into the hobby to have your full squad they are also incredibly creative projects right they uh, these ones are uh, i think someone mentioned in a in a comment that they use some of the spirit hosts kit to build this one um and i think yeah that level of creativity means that you can build out a unit filler that means that is beautifully creative it's an extra part of the hobby more fun to be had while creating your lists but retains that immersion and lowers that barrier to entry for the game. The lower that barrier to entry for the game, the more people are playing it, the healthier the hobby is, in my view. And so I was so psyched to see this be endorsed. To see this being officially endorsed by game you know, by Games Workshop made me really happy and so excited because yeah, with these being endorsed, the game becomes more accessible and the more people who can be playing this game the healthier that game is. Um, I, can, I think I can just repeat that point again and again and again. If you want to loop the last one minute of uh, of this video for you know several hours, that will be the intended version of this video. Um, yeah, super psyched that unit fillers are going to be in the game. Super psyched about that. Um, more stuff from the design team just to another interview again i don't think i can add any meaningful commentary to this i'd love to know how how many points this army is um what i sometimes do is i count the unit when i see a big shot like this i count the units to see if i wanted to replicate this army 
how many model how many boxes would I have to buy? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So this to me looks like twenty-four boxes of models to achieve this um this Tomb King's army. Um, I want to know, is that 2,000 points? Is that 3,000 points? Is that 10,000 points? Um, yeah, just because, you know, I love battles this cinematic, but I want to know what the commitment would, would need to be for it. Okay, the Legacy Factions. Um, I'm not going to focus on this too much because I want to stay positive on this channel. Um, suffice it to say, the my four favourite uh, my four favourite factions didn't quite make the list, and the Noblars from my first attempt at getting into fantasy did not make the list. Um, I'm still hyped up models about the ranges we are getting. Let people who can let people who are happier doing the negative stuff than I am <clears throat> talk about the legacy factions stuff. That's not my role. Um, I'm excited for the dwarfs. Very excited for the dwarves. Very excited for the goblins. Love my goblins. Love, love me some goblins. Uh, okay, Saturday pre-orders. There's the old world boxes. Um, the rule book. I was, I wish we could have had more information from the list building side beforehand. I think that I, I feel like they're missing a trick by not showing us how to build our list so we can get excited about what mods we want to buy. Rather than going, oh, I love all of these leader units. Oh no, I can only have 25% of my army be leader units. Um, I, I'd love to have the list building rules beforehand. And then I can really plan the army. And that would get me a lot more hyped for a system. Um, if I could be thinking about that army in advance. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of more stuff going up that um, went up pre-order on Saturday. Um, that's up for pre-order. The two that, the two sets that aren't up for pre-order yet, that I was kind of hoping to get for pre-order, were that Lady of the Lake on her unicorn, and the Green Knight, uh, for the Bretonians. Um, I've given to understand that they're going to be four world one, so those probably will go up for pre-order on a different day. Um, these snakes, I love these characters. They're so cool. Um, and yes, movement trays, movement trays being a thing, um, kind of wish they were more of a thing in 40k, because when you're playing a horde, I mean like Necrons, you do kind of just want to movement trays to go here on my 20 dudes, they've moved over there now, but yeah, movement trays being a thing, great, cards, um, them selling card sleeves, it's a trick that they've been missing up until now, I like the fact they're, they're selling card sleeves, um, I think for 9th edition 40k, I was buying like Magic the Gathering card sleeves for them so that I could keep them safe. Um, and for my Chaos Knights, I actually bought the small, the tight fit sleeves so I could double sleeve them for maximum protection. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm glad they're selling card, card sleeves. I mean, yes, it will probably be cheaper to buy non Warhammer card sleeves, but the fact that they've got images on them would would tempt enough people that I think it's a savvy decision they've made. Um, I didn't say consumer friendly, I said savvy. Um, the dice, cool, I've got, they've got scattered, I, I, I love scattered dice back in the day. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're back in this system and I know they, they've remained being back in Horus Heresy for a while. Uh, map of the old world. And then um, the Necron boys, I got this one back in like 2017, same for that one, and that one. I, I do enjoy, um, yeah, I, 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 I love this one, this Huron Black Heart. It's, um, I never got this one because I didn't play Red Corsairs. Um, I want to do a lot more research into the Red Corsairs so I can do a full Why I Love episode about them, because based on Huron Black Heart, they're going to be a faction to love. But this dude from the Iron Warriors, and this Overlord. I never bought this sculpt of the Overlord because I have other Overlords. Um, but he is cool. 
here's a cool sculpt. Um, but uh, yeah, and he's being made to order. If you think this one's better than the other Overlord sculpts, then more power to you. Um, I think. Um, Somewhere in that cabinet, I've got uh, that Hasmatech the Resplendid, the one that was going to be a convention exclusive model, but then everything got locked down, so they made him available to order. Um, I think he's my personal favourite sculptor than Overlord. Um, I'm just going to try and get him. Um... Curious, I'm curious. He, he's somewhere. Um, oh, he's in the case of uh, he's in the list of uh, Necrons. Actually, I, I want to use my favorite sculpt. Um, but I need to first. I I think I'm going to start using Nerosaur's Andrak as an Overlord. I love the sculpt, and he got taken out of the 10th edition Necron Codex. Might as well play him as an Overlord now. Um, so yeah, Necron Overlord, cool model. Um, the Seraptic Heavy Construct and the Pylon Thunderhawk. These are all cool sculpts. I I don't know if I'd ever personally own the Seraptic Heavy Construct. I just feel like it's a lot of points, a huge project, and I don't know. I, I don't think I could ever really see myself building one. Um, be cool to own, but um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I could bring myself to put the money down for it. Same for the pylon. The, I love this sculpt. I think it's beautiful. I just don't think I just can't see myself putting the money down for it. Um, I, I I used to be part when I was still on Reddit. I used to be part of the Necron tier subreddit. And it seemed like every person in that used a strapped like heavy construct for their army. Um, I love the pylons, but I, I also really love my own maneuverability. I mean, maybe if I was to make a fully gun line list, I might proxy one of these in, see how it plays, and maybe then put the money down. But, um, yeah. Uh, not a cool horse heresy. I love these dioramas. I really love the diorama bases. Uh, I think they're just really pretty. Some one of the old world Black Library stuff. Um, got Trent Gunderson. Actually, um, I play for a, um, my current Dungeons and Dragons character is low key based, but basically, I you, wholesale took Got Trent Gunderson's backstory. Um, I yeah, I thought that would be. I just thought it was a really fun backstory idea, so that's who I'm playing. Um, uh, stuff from the end times, uh, some audiobooks, White Dwarf covered that, the White Dwarf one, and final one, C uh, Sunday preview, Trug the Trogoth King, I love the Trogoths, I love the mushroom aesthetic, I think he looks really cool, I love this kind of pseudo gorilla arms he's got where he's kind of supporting his weight on them. Uh, kind of makes him look kind of partly bipedal, partly quadrupedal. Um, I just crit born. I love the dragons in Age of Sigmar. They're so beautiful, and I love the idea of painting up these scales. I would so have an entire dragon army in Age of Sigmar if I could. Um, yeah, I love this sculpt. I love this dragon so much. Um, I also love that cockroach and. 
yeah, Belthanos, so beautiful. I've seen some videos of uh, what Belthanos used to look like back in fantasy, um, so I fully appreciate that it's a different looking dude, but on its own, I think, you know, out of context, this is such a beautiful model, and I've detailed the, the, the sheer, I won't say carpentry, but it's, I don't, it's, a, it's a life form of this insect is so beautiful to me. I love the ethereal green that you have in these um, Sylvaneth models. I love that card. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. Blood Bowl. Love Blood Bowl as a game system. I love the idea of just American football in the fantasy setting. I also love how it's very clearly American football as viewed by a Brit, because like I don't know much about American football. I see, I look at American football, and even though I understand rationally that it isn't just a more violent version of rugby, it kind of looks like a more violent version of rugby. So I can, so the origin of Blood Bowl from that perspective, I think is phenomenal. And I also love the fact that Nuffle is the god of Blood Bowl, um, and I always think of Nuffle as being the most powerful god in in the Warhammer systems. End of the Death Volume 3. I'm looking forward to this. I want to see how they do it. Um, like, we all know what's going to happen, but it's how it happens. Like, we all know it's going to end with you know, Horus slay, you know, slays, slays Sanguinius, Emperor slays Horus, mortally wounded on the Golden Pool. Oh, we know that that's been established law since 4th edition, right? Uh, li well, I say 4th edition because that's when I got into the game. Not that's when that law started. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we know how it's going to end. We want to know how we get there. That's the deal here. Um, and this is a beautiful version of this book. That is genuinely phenomenal. Um, also, Games Workshop, they're really good at these metallics uh, pages. Um, for the most recent Necron Codex, oh, um, yeah, for the most recent Necron Codex, they did metallic green for the Collector's Edition Codex, and the, it was really beautifully done. So the quality of this, I know, is going to be amazing. Um, they did the leather map for um, before the Imperial Palace. And again, so, and that was really high quality as well. I've got one of my own. Um, so, no doubt about this being an incredibly high quality product. And then, paperback version, Siege of Terror bookmark looks cool. And then the three videos for Warhammer Plus this week. Some more Lore Masters. They've really been doing a lot uh, for Citadel Masterclass. They've been doing a lot more with you know, the. These undead, the vampire counts models. Um, if you're not subscribed to Warhammer Plus or you don't watch the painting masterclass, they frequently go on. It's, they frequently come in groups of what it is they're painting, and it sometimes feels like when they've got a theme going, they really, or it, it, or if the team behind it are really into a assist, are really into a particular army or a particular model, to have weeks of content just for painting them. Um, like I found their uh, flayed skin tutorial really interesting, really useful because you know flayed ones from Necrons and the um, Night Lords they do a lot of stuff with that. Um, I really liked how they do. I really like that tutorial. Um, I'll still watch this video because I kind of I, a I watch all the videos because I feel like I need to to justify the subscription, but also because even if I don't use the technique there and then, I might having watched it i'll go back and go oh actually i need that technique now let's re-watch that video and see uh, and uh, you know, maybe if i adapt it or something it can you know help me improve my painting um law master is always interesting the battle reports are weird um so this is part two of basically they get two boss creatures from 40k just put them in a Colosseum, kind of just outside engagement range with each other, and they just start rolling dice to see who wins. Um, it's fascinating. 
but it's deeply weird. Um, I'm hyped for it. So I, I did. I did enjoy part one more than I care to admit. But yeah, it's, it's a weird battle report. Um, you know, you think they'd go. You know, they've definitely not run out of combinations of armies to fight, especially with 40k because 10th edition only launched last year. But yeah, it's a it's strange battle report they're doing. And I, I like the fact they're doing strange battle reports. I just didn't expect a battle report like this one to occur. Like I said, Law Master's always fun, more than the rest of. Um Anyway, yeah, that's it for this week's roundup of Warhammer News content. Um, I'm going to try and make this every week. And yeah, if you want to give this video a you know, like and subscribe, that'd be amazing. Want to leave a comment? Um, yeah, if you want to leave a comment below, I'd really like that. Uh, I'll say current question of the day. What, from the most recent week's news articles from uh, Warhammer Community, what is your favorite thing that you're that from it you know what 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 kind of got you the most excited and what maybe are you less pleased with like my the videos i'm going to try and keep as positive as i can for as long as i can because that's what i'm about but i'm not going to ignore the negatives that are put out so if you want to if you want to vent about something from the week's news please feel free to put it in a comment. I do read all of them. Um, and I think, yeah, and if you wanted a kind of a place to vent about stuff you're not such, such a fan of, even on a, you know, even if it's something I'm really hyped by, right? If you looked, if you took one look at the um, the unicorn, the Lady of the Lake model, and you're thinking, oh my god, this is terrible, put it in a comment. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Put it down below. Um, because, like, you know, should go without saying this is all subjective opinion, right? What I like isn't going to be what you like, um, necessarily, and there'll be stuff you like that maybe I wasn't such a fan of. So, put it down below, what do you love, or what do you not love? Um, and with that, it's been really good talking, and I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do another news next week, um, Unless the reception to this is it is just the absolute worst, um, I'll I'll do I'll try and do one of these every week. So with that, have a really good day, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.